Riley Herbst talks about his future plans. Plus, I'm going to say something nice about Haley Deegan. Welcome back to Break Heart. I'm Matt, back from a pumpkin festival, back from standing out in a sunflower field, back from wondering, should I wear a sweatshirt? Should I wear pants? Shorts would have been a better option here. It doesn't matter. It's the Midwest. You all understand how it is. Well, unless you live in like Florida or California, where, you know, it's just kind of warm all the time. But whatever, we're getting into today's news, starting off with I've already recorded the video. We've now decided to take a field trip off site from the original Break Hard studio here, but something happened that I felt like we should probably talk about in this video. Teresa Earnhardt has decided to sell off 399 acres of Dale Earnhardt's property in Mooresville, North Carolina, part of the old Dale Earnhardt farm. And I know people are going to absolutely freak out about this. She's selling off 399 acres to make way for an industrial park. It'll be the Mooresville Technology Park. My body completely disappeared right there on the green screen. Uh, that's weird. People are definitely gonna comment about that but she'll be selling off those 399 acres to make way for the Mooresville Technology Park which will be between Patterson Road and Rustic Road um, in Mooresville and put up a map right here so you can kind of get an idea on where that's at this property is about two and a half miles away from the old DEI shop it doesn't include the DEI shop she's not getting rid of that she's not getting rid of where Dale's mausoleum is it's just 399 acres and it's okay that this is happening I know a lot of people are going to be mad. The Wicked Witch of the Southeast strikes again. Dale will be rolling over in his grave. This isn't what Dale would have wanted. She's a disgrace. We've heard all of it at this point. Uh, she's a 65-year-old woman, guys. I mean, at some point, she's going to have to start selling off some assets because it doesn't make sense for a 65-year-old woman to have 400 acres of property that she's not going to take care of. And why have that expense as well to have somebody take care of it when you can just sell it off and have the assets. Her and Dale still have plenty of properties around. Um, but like I said, it's been 23 years at this point. Now she is scheduled or a representative for her is scheduled to appear on October 22nd um, in Mooresville to request the rezoning to go from, you know, rural, uh, you know, um, occupancy or, you know, residential occupancy to uh, commercial uh, property which is, I'm sure, going to be approved at this point. Uh, but it will be kind of the biggest industrial park in that area. There's a little bit uh, of another one off to the northeast of where that property is at. But for the most part, it's okay that this is happening. I know people want to hate Teresa Earnhardt at every turn and, you know, you know, rag on her for everything. She did give up the eight. She didn't renew that. So that's a win. She's softening up a little bit. And now she's selling off part of the Dale Earnhardt farm. And I get it, right? A lot of fans are not going to be happy about it. But at some point, this was always going to happen. Um, and now has come the time for that. So Teresa Earnhardt selling off 399 acres of the Dale Earnhardt property in Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, now they just have to wait for that rezoning to be approved on October 22nd, and then they can proceed with it however they want. But just think it was interesting because it is still something of Dale's and I know how the internet is going to react to this. Riley Herbst. So Riley Herbst is very much expected to be the third driver over at 2311 Racing. We've been talking about that for months. If you watch the Silly Season updates, you're very aware of that. What you might also be aware of is that hasn't been announced yet because, yeah, there's a 2311 Racing Front Row Motorsport lawsuit against NASCAR happening, which you're probably very aware of. But lost in all the hoopla of that is Riley Herbst's future, unfortunately for him. The Xfinity Brickyard winner from back in the summertime uh, is kind of sitting in purgatory, like he's in an episode of Lost, and which is unfortunate for him and for the rest of us that spent a lot of time watching Lost just to get to the end and be like, that was, that's it? That was time I'm never going to get back. Much like that show, The Leftovers, too. Just anything that those lost guys touch, just I'm done. I can't, I'm just not dealing with it anymore. But for Riley, it's unfortunate for him because he needs that third charter, but NASCAR's not going to approve that third charter going over to 2311 Racing. So if you remember from the court documents that came out a few weeks ago, uh, it was confirmed that 2311 Racing has purchased a third charter from Stuart Haas Racing, which we knew was happening, but we officially, officially saw it. Unfortunately, NASCAR is not going to approve the transfer of that charter until this lawsuit is settled, meaning Riley is just kind of sitting there wondering the heck's happening with my career right now. So there were some rumblings back when, you know, Riley to 2311 Racing first started that his family helped purchase that charter. Obviously, in the court documents, it was listed as 2311 Racing. Not sure how all of that is going to work out over there. But for Riley Herbst, his future right now kind of hangs in the balance on whether or not a judge is going to grant an injunction. And if he doesn't, well, or she doesn't, then where is this going to go? If an injunction is granted, that will allow 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports to race in 2025 under the new charter agreement with their charters while they have their ongoing lawsuit happening. 
I would assume, this is me assuming, that those charter transfers would also happen because of that. And if they do, then that's great for Riley. He and his family's uh, line of convenience stores and the B2B deal that they have with Monster. Everybody can go over there, have this wonderful two-car Monster team with bubble walls. Everybody's going to be happy. Let's say that injunction does not get granted. What happens then? Well, they could enter him as a third car. Now, is it financially responsible? Absolutely not. However, is the money that comes in from that B2B deal, is that enough to cover the loss? Is that enough to sort of break even and operate that team? Remains to be seen, but you can make an argument there. Plus, also, the open spots are going to be worth a little bit more money next year uh, if those charters, you know, in fact, don't exist. As NASCAR has said, where they're already planning to race as just a 32 chartered uh, series next year instead of the regular 36. So they've already taken out the four that exist between 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports. But for Riley, it's really unfortunate. And it really kind of sucks for him because there's four races left in the season and he has not announced his plans for next year yet. And he was asked about that this weekend at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, also his home track. And this is what he had to say. Riley said, quote, there's a lot of things holding back the dominoes to fall, and I'm not the first one to initiate that. Hopefully everything will sort itself out here shortly, but I don't see anything happening in the meantime. Riley would love to be the first one to flick that domino and let everything fall. Unfortunately, it's bigger than him right now. He's just kind of the driver in this situation, and there's a major lawsuit happening. And like he said, doesn't seem like anything is going to be happening anytime soon. Now, we should get the ruling on the injunction uh, before the end of the uh, Cup Series season, for the most part, we should get it. Now, it could get extended and pushed back. The judge doesn't necessarily have to rule on the day of the court date, which I believe is November 4th off the top of my head. Um, but if he doesn't rule or she doesn't rule then, then yeah, it could end up after the season uh, at that point. But we should have an idea within the next month or month and a half whether or not that injunction is going to happen. If it does, then that's good news for Riley. If it doesn't, then that's where things are going to get interesting. What does Riley do next season? Is he even in a race car? I would imagine he is. There's enough money behind him. They could find him a spot, but he's not going back to the Haas factory team, and there's not really any open rides in the Toyota camp, so it to be seen what happens to him. Unfortunately for Riley, um, Zane Smith is probably very much in the same position. Zane has not been very outspoken about it, but he has been the name that continually gets linked to Front Row Motorsports and their third charter, which they also don't actually have possession of, the same way that 2311 Racing doesn't have possession of theirs. It's stuck in escrow. It's stuck in purgatory. It's not theirs because, well, there's an ongoing lawsuit. NASCAR is not going to approve the transfer. That's why Stuart Haas Racing had to sign the new charter agreement because they are technically still the owners of these charters currently. So having said all of that, um, yeah, it's a wait and see situation at this point, which is unfortunate because, you know, both of these guys want to have their plans announced. You don't want to go into the off season sort of with your status up in the air in limbo in jeopardy, whatever you want to refer to it as. And, uh, yeah, it's one of those, uh, you know, ricochet shots essentially of what this lawsuit has brought on to the sport. But for now, everybody's got to sit around and wait and see what happens. Switching gears here, get it, because it's a motorsport show. We're going to talk about Haley Deegan having her first Indy NXT test, uh, I guess, of her career on Friday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, the haters say I can never say anything nice about Haley Deegan, but I'm here to tell you I will say something nice today. I don't know why I said it so sternly, but I will say something nice. And by the end of it, you're going to be like, well, it was nice. You had us in the first half, but you lost us in the second half, which I'm very aware of. But for Haley Deegan, she started off in practice number one. She went out there. She ran a lap time of one minute, 21.96 seconds, which was 6.27 seconds off the pace. Not ideal. It was very Lindsey Brewer-esque um, in terms of her pace. But it was her first time ever in the car, right? Track evolution, second practice. We'll see what happens. In the second practice, she went out and ran a lap time of 1.89 seconds, and she was only 3.71 seconds off the pace. So she gained three seconds there, essentially, um, over her lap time from the first session, and she gained three seconds to the leaders in that same time period as well. Hey, that's really good. That is actually good, you know, um, that is good improvement. And people will say, oh, like track evolution, everything like that. You're not wrong. Like the track definitely did evolve. The track got faster. The The fastest lap in practice number one was a 115.6 second lap. The fastest lap in practice two was a 115.1 second lap. So about a half second of pickup there. Well, Haley picked up three seconds. So that's like two and a half seconds above sort of what the track evolution was for the most part. Now, here's where the haters are going to say, see, you couldn't say something nice and just leave it at that. You're right, I can't. Here's the problem. 
In the second practice, Haley Deegan was 3.7 seconds off the pace, as we've talked about. She was 1.7 seconds slower than the car in front of her, the second slowest car, who was only 1.5 seconds off the fastest lap of the session. So she was still slower than the guy in front of her in his delta to the fastest car. But listen, it was only her first time, her first day ever in an Indy NXT car. And honestly, I am actually really surprised about how much time she did gain there. I think that is a really good improvement. Now, is she going to go out there and contend for podiums? Absolutely not. Uh, maybe on ovals. I think on ovals, she's going to be rather competitive. But in terms of road courses, she's still going to be slow. She's still likely going to get lapped. And the first half of the season is probably not going to be very much fun for her or her fans uh, on the Internet. But at least she did show improvement, and I think that's a good sign forward. Now we'll just have to wait and see sort of how all of that progresses. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway isn't the most complex road course out there, uh, but the fact of the matter is she still gained a decent chunk of time, which is impressive. So she has that going for her. Either way, let me know in the comments what you think about Riley Herbst, his comments, his future, Haley Deegan, her first test in Indy NXT, and the time that she gained the positives and the negatives of what I said, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard